What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Rusto Mod Garage. In the last episode, you saw us take this TDI and 700R4 Chevy transmission and try to fit it into our Jeep Wrangler chassis that we're actually putting underneath of our 1950 Willys wagon. So we ended up going with a Volkswagen TDI motor and mating it to a Chevrolet 700R4 transmission using a adapter plate from Diesel Conversion Specialties. Now we have put the motor in in the last episode trying to see what everything was going to hit with our front wheel drive setup from a front wheel drive accessories to a rear wheel drive and it hit a bunch of spots. So before we make motor mounts and cut up all of the Jeep mounts that we have, we need to mount our Willys body to our Jeep Wrangler frame. In the previous episode, you saw us cut the frame in a few different spots that way we could fit the body onto the frame and we ended up using just these aluminum blocks as you can see here where they're just basing the body up off the frame so we can get the right height of everything and that way we can go ahead and make body mounts for our willies. Now we have to align everything exactly where we want it so that way whenever we go to weld it all the body mounts will be in the exact spot so the wheels will be in the wheel wells and everything like that. Now the Jeep has body mounts on it but we ended up chopping them all off because none of them lined up and we're trying to line the body mounts up with the existing Willys body mounts as you can see here. So now we're gonna to try to figure out how we're going to make some mounts for this thing so that way we can get this thing tied down. Now we're gonna redo all the motor mounts and just make them from scratch, but we had an idea and we were like, well, the Jeep was already mounted to its frame originally, so why not just use the mounts that were already on the original frame? So we brought out our old original Willys chassis that we had removed in a previous episode and we're going to try to start to cut all of the mounts off of the original frame and then we can reuse them onto our new Wrangler frame. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start chopping these body mounts off and then putting them into place of our new Wrangler frame and that'll save us a lot of time and effort of making these things. So let's get to cutting them off. So there's one of our other back body mounts onto our new frame, so we're gonna weld that up. And then we'll weld the rest up. But that's kind of what's gonna look like. We'll box the back of it. But it's a good start by making them from scratch. All right, so now that we have our original body mounts from our Willys frame, we can go ahead and weld these things together. So we're just going to weld them right where they fit to, and we'll box them in after we get done tacking them into place. Okay, so from underneath, that's pretty much what it looks like. As you can see, it mounts exactly where the original wheelies mounted to. We did have to make some things fit a little bit better, but for the most part, we ended up just cutting a block and then welding it right where the original wheelies body mount went and then welding that to the frame. Very easy way to do it, and it saves us a lot of time than making a body mount for each corner and each different size. So this way we could save some time, get everything tied down so we can move on to other stuff. So now I'll lift the Jeep up in the air and we can get a better look at our body mounts. Alright, here's a little bit better look at our motor mounts that we had. So you can see we had these aluminum blocks in the frame that we're going to space it up on this side. So these are the mounts that we measured and then mounted to the frame. So now we can remove the blocks and weld those completely.
We also went ahead and welded in the Jeep frame on each side where we had the clearance for our body to fit inside the Jeep frame. And I had a lot of comments in the last episode asking what the dimensions were. So it was about an inch and a quarter L channel. And then the upright part was about two inches. So if you guys are doing this at home, you can kind of see what you need to do here to be able to cut a piece of L channel and then weld it into place. Really easy way to do it. All right, shifting gears a little bit here. So now that we got our body mounted and everything, now we're going to try to focus on the motor trans and the drivetrain situation. So in the last episode, you saw us fit everything in there and explain that we are going to use a Tom Woods slip yoke eliminator kit. And we're going to do this because of our wheelbase of our Jeep is very short compared to the Chevy truck that this originally came out of. So we're going to try to install this so that way we have a lot of drive train angle and everything like that our drive shaft won't bind up because it's too short so we're going to get ready to install this kit and we're going to show you guys kind of how we do it we haven't done this before so we're going to learn right along with you guys all right so we're getting ready to do the uh, slip yoke eliminator kit on the 241c transfer case and what that does is it eliminates this slip yoke component of the drive shaft that rides in this uh, section of the of the housing as it, you go up and down it allows it to articulate in and out as the axle goes up and down the, the jeeps are notoriously short wheelbase and short drive lines so you get severe angles in there you get a lot of uh, vibration this one we intend on the the willies it's a little bit longer wheelbase we stretched it we stretched it 11.1 inches overall so we pick up quite a bit of quite a bit of drive shaft length ultimately but uh at the same time, we plan on raising the suspension uh, a bit, a couple of inches, because it's not gonna ride the same. The Willys is probably, the body itself is a little bit heavier than the, uh, the TJ body. So we're gonna take this tail housing off. It's about nine and three eighths long, and we're gonna replace it with this flange, which is about three quarters of an inch long. So we're gonna pick up about eight and a half inches of length, which means we get to add eight and a half inches to our drive shaft length. Uh, and we'll have a slip yoke that's integrated into the drive shaft. At the end of the day, so this is in there. This is this is a flange that accepts. Uh, well, we'll put a. It's known as a CV joint, constant velocity joint that'll bolt onto the face here, and then a, a traditional U joint on the back. I'm going to do this. Haven't done this before, so we'll see how it turns out. Then this is a kit that was that we got from Tom Wood. Uh, Tom Woods custom drive shafts is uh, the supplier of the kit. Nice kit, looks like. This transfer case we got uh, rebuilt off of eBay. Uh, couldn't find one, couldn't find a core actually either. A little over 600 bucks, which I thought was a pretty good deal. Now you gotta be very careful here. This is the tricky part. This is the pump that pumps oil. And there's a little tube down in here. That's why it'd be nice to have it bench with a hole on it. All right, so so it looks like the magnet and the filter down here, at least at least a filter. So it looks like a new chain, which is good, no flex in it. 
looks like the sprockets are used, of course. Spring, we'll put that aside over here. We've already got the yoke off of the front of it, so in theory, this all lifts out of here. They say in the instructions that if there's a needle bearing in here somewhere, and I don't see a needle bearing, that you have to press it out. So this, we might have got lucky. Just have to slide this on the new one. I think we got lucky. Now, that made it easy. All right, we're getting ready to put this back together so you can see here. Got the magnet here. Uh, that's supposed to pick up crap. Like I say, this was rebuilt, bought off of eBay. So far, it looks pretty good. The new chain in it. All right. So you want to make sure you get your pump tube in there. Make sure the O-ring is around it. Get the pickup over here and your magnet down in there. Saved that much room. Well, from here to here, so about five inches. I was thinking that was coming off, but it's not. Just the tail, just the tail housing. So that's pretty good, and that'll help us because of the uh, the transmission that we're using is a lot longer than the stock transmission. So we need all the room that we can get. All right, so now that we got that installed, we can begin to install the transfer case to the transmission, and then we can design motor mounts and transmission mounts and everything like that. That way we can try to get this thing buttoned up here. But you have to see that on the next episode. So make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe so you can see what we're gonna do next on this thing. We're gonna be designing all the motor mounts and transmission mounts and stuff like that in CAD. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. And thanks for watching.